Hi, in this video what I want to do is I want to show you how to find the chi-square critical values for confidence intervals uh, using the TI-84 graphing calculator. And I will say that you can use the same method to find the critical values for a hypothesis test. Just remember that the relationship in a hypothesis test between your level of confidence and your alpha is that in the confidence interval, C is going to be whatever is given, and we write it as a decimal, so C is 0.95. Um, the relationship between our critical value, or sorry, our confidence level and alpha, is that alpha is really just 1 minus our level of confidence. So in this case, if I take 1 minus 0.95, I would get 0 0.05. So in a hypothesis test, if they give you an alpha of 0 0.05, it's the same thing as the level of confidence of 0.95. Okay, it does make a difference in the hypothesis test what tail of a test that you're doing, so you do want to pay attention to that. Um, but you would kind of use the same techniques. So if you remember with chi-square, this one is not a symmetric distribution. So when you are solving this, you're going to have two different values. When you're dealing with a normal distribution or a t-distribution, your critical values are just the same things with different signs. Okay, so one thing that I do want to point out is what we're going to do is we're going to find our chi-square to the left and our chi-square to the right. And this is going to be centered. 95% um, of our area is going to be in between these two values. And so basically what I need to do is I need to find the area on the outside of this. Okay, and these areas are going to be the same. It's just that one stretched out a little bit more. So to find that, I would just do half of my alpha level or the 0 0.05. So on this side, I would have 0 0.025. Half of that is also up here, the 0 0.025 as well. So if you were running a two-tail hypothesis test, you would do the exact same technique as finding the critical values for a confidence interval. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to find your area to the left of each of these values. So I need to find my area to the left and that's going to help me to be able to find the critical value. So um, in the TI-84, whenever you are dealing with distributions like CDF, um, it always starts at zero and adds until you tell it to stop. So it always starts to the left and adds up until you get to the stopping point on the right, which is why I wanted to use the area to the left. All right, so unfortunately, if I go into my distributions, if you remember from finding critical values in the normal distribution and the T distribution, there was an inverse norm and an inverse t to help us find those critical values. Well, if I look at chi-square, there is not an inverse chi-squared already pre-programmed into our calculator. So we can't just go into our distributions and hit a nice fancy button. So what we have to do is we have to solve the equation with using our normal CDF and we're going to solve for x. So if I go into math and under math, if I just hit the up arrow key, I would go to C where it says numeric solver, and that's what I'm going to select. It's already highlighted on C, so I'm just going to hit enter. And what's going to happen is it's going to give me two equations, basically the left and the right. So what I want to do is I want to figure out um, what would make this true. And there's a couple different things that you could do. You could put zero in the first one, or you could also put your area to the left in the first one. Okay, so I'm just going to put the area to the left of each value. So the chi-square left, the area to the left is 0 0.025. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my second distribution and I'm going to go find chi-square CDF. Make sure you select chi-square CDF, which is option eight. So you can either arrow down until you get to eight and hit enter, or I like to just push the number button. So I would just put eight. My lower is going to be zero. My upper is going to be where I want it to stop. Well, I don't know where I want it to stop. That's my X. That's my unknown. That's what I'm trying to figure out. <clears throat> and my degrees of freedom, 
I haven't discussed on here, so let's find the degrees of freedom. That comes from our sample size. So n is 25. Remember that degrees of freedom for chi-square is n minus 1. So I would just do 25 minus 1, which would give me 24. So 24 is what I would put in for my degrees of freedom. And then I would just hit paste. And it's going to ask me OK down here. So you can either hit second and enter, or you can just hit the graph button because the graph button is directly underneath that. And if I hit graph, um, at first it's just going to give me a value. That's not the correct answer. So I'm going to hit solve. I want to hit solve for this. And I can see that it's 12.401. So 12.401 would be our chi-squared critical value to the left. So this would be our left or our lower critical value. And then I need to find my chi-square to the right. Well, with this one, the, the left was easy to see because it was just the 0 0.025. With the left of our right, see this gets confusing. So we're looking at our chi-square to the right. We need our entire area to the left of this, all the way to the starting point. Okay, so if I do that, I can either do 1 minus 0 0.025 or I can take the 0 0.025 and add it to the 95. Either way, I get an area to the left of 0.975. So we're going to go back into our calculator. And what I can do is I can just hit the up button and it'll go to the last place that I was at. And then I can come up here and I can change that 0 0.025 to 0 0.975. Okay, so that's my area. So then I would just hit the OK again, and I would hit solve again. And we can see that it's 39.364. So 39.364 would be our critical value on the right hand side. So our lower, and it might just be lower and upper in your textbook. There's a couple different ways of thinking about it. But um, like I said, you kind of have to do reversing of finding out when does the normal CDF equal this value. And so we had to use the equation solver that's built into your graphing calculator. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.